So this is a pretty good start. This you know gives us kind of a place to work from, but yeah, you know that's not the kind of smoky, glowing kind of situation that you know uh, that we looked at in the first place. So what can we do to make that happen a little bit? Uh, first things first, I want this just to be a little bit whoa too big. A little, little bigger, yeah, 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 ooh, ooh, yeah, much better, okay. So, you know, a part of this game that we're gonna play is not only this question of instancing, right, how do we draw multiple pieces of geometry, but then how do we take that and do some kind of interesting post-process effect in that in some way? So there's a bunch of kind of like ways that we might dig into this, and one of the things we can start with is we can start by playing with a little bit of feedback. So to get started here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a feedback top. And we're just gonna set up a real simple feedback network to get started, and then we'll push on that just a little bit. So we've got a feedback top. We're gonna get add a composite top in here next. Oops, composite. In my composite top, the feedback's gonna go in the top input. My render is going to go right into the second input. On my composite, I'm going to go ahead and turn this to add. And then in order to complete this feedback loop, I need to be able, I need to point this feedback top at what it should use to kind of create this loop, right? How it's going to uh, make a nice little loop here. So I'm going to grab this uh, top. I'm going to drag it right on top of this target top parameter, and it's going to feed right in there. And now what I'm going to end up with is I've got a situation where every time we draw another frame, we draw it on top of the existing frame. So we're just kind of, you know, drawing forever and ever and ever and ever. So this is this is pretty nice. We get, you know, we could make some real abstract art or some kind of like light painting kind of art here. The challenge we're going to see is that, you know, mm, that's not creating trails so much as it's just creating kind of permanent uh, pixels that don't ever seem to go away. Now I could, you know, just pulse reset this here in the feedback, but this isn't quite exactly what I want. Right? What I really want is something that fades over time. So I'm going to go ahead and insert here a level top. And our level is going to help make sure that every time we go through this loop, uh, the previous frame is reduced by a little bit of its opacity. Right, so let's go ahead and head over to our post page. We could set this to be like not 0.9. I think I got an extra symbol in there. Not 0.9. And now, okay, that's interesting. I want a little bit more trail situation. So maybe I want it like to be not 0.95. Closer. How about not 0.97? Yeah, that's nice. Now, one of the things that we might also see here, especially if we go ahead and view this, uh, kind of composited on top of black, is we can see that we have this situation where our white never quite goes away. Now, there are lots of ways to kind of fuss with this and fight with this. Probably the best way to think about this is to come over to our composite top, and we're going to change our pixel format to have a larger bit depth. So if we turn this up to, say, like a 16... Uh, bit float. Now we're going to have something that works much better, right? Now we actually get this kind of traily situation that's much nicer. Now the other thing that I'm seeing here, right, is that we can see that the uh, the way that we're sampling this information as it's coming in, sometimes my arms move faster, uh, right, than um, we might like. So when I move really fast, I have these kind of discrete points that show up. If I move nice and slowly, I end up with these kind of gooey, drippy trails. So maybe I want something that has more of that kind of trail-like effect to it all the time.